coming up on episode 340 of Wheel Bearings. You got the Toyota Tacoma TRD Off Road, the Range Rover Plug In Hybrid, Ford Maverick Tremor, the end of the Apple Car, the Dodge Charger Daytona, uh, the Ford Supervan sets a Bathurst record, charging Ford EVs at superchargers. Tesla uh, total solar eclipse uh, events at Ford Bronco Off Rodeo in Texas, Honda's plug in hybrid fuel cell CRV, and more. All that coming up next. <laughs> This is episode 340 of the Wheel Bearings Podcast. I am Sam Abul Samet from Guidehouse Insights. And I am Nicole Wakeman from The Road Reflected. And I am Roberto Baldwin from SAE International. And fortunately for all of you, you don't have to listen to our long rants about uh, corporate IT security. Oh, uh, that, that yeah. was did not record. <laughs> yeah. Well, mine was more like I was angry at Dropbox and angry... <laughs> But then there's also, yeah, anger this Saturday morning. I have some anger with Dropbox right now. Um, whatever you do, do not join your team, your 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 organization's team, if you have a personal Dropbox accounts, because it, it erases and just and and just eliminates your personal account and shoves it all into your corporate account. Yay! Don't get him started. Don't do that. Don't do Go that. To Sam. Go to the next thing, quick. Go all right, quick. What have you been quick. driving, Nicole? I have been driving. The 2023 Ford Maverick. Are you sure? Because it says Ford Macrick here. I think it says Ford Macerick. <laughs> no. Actually, that's probably closer. <laughs> okay, you know what? Seriously, I've mistyped everything I've typed for the last 48 hours because I got a new keyboard. It's going to take me 15 Oh, years. it's going to take a good just, 10 years to get that. just enough off from the old one that my... Oh, I swear All your muscle memory has been forgotten. All my muscle. And now the arrow keys don't do the arrow key thing. So I also uh, have to figure out what I've done. I've been things. mistyping things for 20 years. Oh, now it says Mavrock. Wait, I C K. There we go. I'm driving a professional writer and I don't know how to type correctly. <laughs> yeah, that's where I am right now. It's, just, it's like a mess. Like everything's going to take me twice as long. Um, so I have the 2023 Ford Maverick, uh, which I actually really like the Maverick. I mean, this is a compact. Pickup truck, it's not a gigantic pickup truck with outrageous amounts of capability and all the crazy in the world, but I like that this is actually something that you can manage. Like it's a manageable pickup truck for a change. Um, and I have it with the Tremor, which I guess they're going to say is a package, the Tremor off road package, which makes it a little bit more capable. But I feel like it's important to note it's a little bit more capable. You're not suddenly getting yourself a true off-road truck. It's sort of like off-road light. Um, and it is a package. I think it's just available on the XLT and I believe the Lariat, I think, were the two yeah, that they said so. it was on. Yeah. Um, and what this adds to it, it's like just about $3,000 for the package. You get an extra, about an inch suspension lift, locking your def, diff. You get... Um, Something called, I love this, and this isn't exclusive to this, the trail control. Have you guys played around with mm -hmm. this at some point? It's kind of it's kind of like cruise control for, for off-roading. Exactly. For yeah, that's exactly how I would describe it. So cruise control on the road, you set the speed. It just kind of keeps you there. You just have to worry about steering, take some of the toughness out of driving. On a trail control, same idea, but at really, really, really super low speeds, like one, two, three, four miles an hour, like you can set it. So it, but it does the same thing. If you're on something that's a little bit more tricky or you're a little bit nervous, you can let it keep the speed and you're just steering the truck, which is kind of nice. I like that. So I like that this is an off-road light truck because I think there, you know, it's a thing where a lot of the times you're either getting a truck, it's, or any vehicle, this is for the pavement. Or this is so that you can climb straight up the side of a rock face. It's this is the middle, you know. This lets you have some capability. It makes it a little bit more less likely to get stuck if you happen to drive through a muddy like two track or something. If you're got snow, it gives you a little extra clearance for snow. I like this sort of off road light vehicles. I think that's a nice little segment to have. I think it's nice to have that package for and for three thousand dollars. It's not cheap, but it's not outrageous considering what you're getting. Um, and the truck itself, this only starts at $23,000. It's not an outrageously expensive truck. That's the base cheapest version of the Maverick that you can get. Uh, this one all in is 32.5. You guys want to take a guess at destination and delivery? 12.95. <clears throat> 
Call of um, 96. Sam wins 1495. <laughs> good job, Sam. So good job, Sam. Go, Sam. <laughs> uh, so, and it, like the, what it's adding on there, you're paying, you know, $3,000 just for the off road package. And there's like things that are like five or $600 a pop. There's Copilot 360. There's a spray in bed liner, which honestly, if you're going to have stuff you're going to be tossing in the bed, it's great to have the bed liner because it keeps your bed from getting all scratched and gross. There's splash guards on there and there's equipment group which it doesn't detail out, I just realized, equipment group 300A, which is $2,200. So there's some extra little bells and whistles on here. You could definitely get this for cheaper if you wanted to. Uh, but, I mean, it gives you good capability. It's a small truck, though, so if you're really looking at serious towing, serious payload, you're going to be seriously disappointed. Um, up to 4,000 pounds for towing, up to 1,500 pounds in its bed. It's a very short bed. Uh, the tremor actually takes those numbers down. It can do 2,000 pounds because you can't of towing because you can't. There's a trailer hitch that's optional that like takes you up to that 4,000 pound maximum. They don't offer it on the tremor package Maverick. So you can't get it on this. And the payload is a little bit smaller. It's 1,200. But I think this is like a starter truck. Like truck light. Like I kind well, of think, I, I, I think like this is, you know, we've said this before. You know, this is really all the truck that most people actually need. Yep. Exactly. It's exactly. the best truck for like 85% of the population. Right. Yes. Most people don't need even an F-150. That That's probably got way more payload, way more towing, way more everything than most people are using. Like you see the guy who brings the two trash bags to the dump on Saturday. Which <laughs> I think you've overpurchased. You could put those I've in the I've done that in an X5. I've gone to the dump I mean, in an this, X5. So the, the, the tremor the tremor will easily handle those two bags of trash. It will. It'll easily handle 20 bags of mulch. Yes. You know, it's, so it's much perf- mulch. So much mulch. And spring is coming, so they say, because it's March now. So I like I like the Maverick. I think it's I think it's a good little truck. Uh, front wheel drive, all wheel drive are both available. Um, and there's a hybrid or a gas engine. I the gas is 250 horsepower, 277 pound feet. It's just fine. It easily gets this truck up to speed. It has no trouble. Um, it's not super aggressive on the acceleration front, but it it is more than good enough. Like it's really comfortable, relatively quiet, and I love. I like compact trucks. I always have because I feel like you said, Sam, most people don't need a full-size truck. Most people never use the capability that comes with that F-150. But you have to deal with the negatives, which are how big it is, how awkward it is in parking lots. Like there's downsides to having a vehicle that big. You get rid of some of them when you go with a compact truck. Suddenly it's just like driving Gosh, it's, I don't know, is it longer than the average full-size FCV at this point? I don't think it is. Like, it, it no. doesn't feel cumbersome at all, but technically you're driving a truck. So I'm I'm a big fan of the Maverick. I genuinely like, and I love that the little, okay, one of my favorite features, it's a silly feature. So in the center console, like almost under the dashboard, that far forward, there's a piece of plastic that has, it sort of divides things up into storage. You can entirely just grab that and take it out. So when you spill stuff or you need to clean it, it's super easy to clean. I love it that if you if you fumble your coffee, if you get cookie crumbs everywhere, whatever it is, you can actually clean your truck instead of like trying to somehow figure out how you're going to get stuff off of tiny little nooks and crannies. I love that that just comes out. You can wash it off and put it right back in. I think that's neat. And, you know, the back seat's big enough to hold couple of adults or a yeah. couple of decent sized dogs. You yes. know, no problem at all. It is, it is roomy enough that it doesn't feel, you know, even though compact is in the word for this, you know, it's a compact truck. Don't think of it as squished. It's not like, it's a very usable rear seat that you can easily fit two adults back there. You, you know, it's not, you're not going to feel squished. Even with three, you're not going to feel overly squished. It's a surprisingly roomy little truck. I, I'm, I'm a Maverick fan. I was the minute I drove and I thought this is a great little it's a great little truck. It's fantastic. Fantabulous. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. My, 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 I, neighbors, I, my neighbors still love theirs, <clears throat> you know, that they got, yeah. you know, very, one, a very early build one. Um, mm-hmm. And they have the hybrid. They they got the hybrid XL okay. you know, for, for $20,000, the, the base model with the Steelys. Right? Um, and at that point, it didn't even offer cruise control on that base <laughs> model. And yeah, you know, they they added an aftermarket cruise control for three hundred bucks, but they they get forty miles per gallon with that thing. They love it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. You won't you won't so, get forty with the turbo with the two liter turbo, and unfortunately, for some reason, Ford still has not seen fit to offer the all wheel drive and hybrid combination on the Maverick. You yeah. can get it on the Escape, uh, but not on the Maverick. I would man, that's a 
that's a winning combination right there. All wheel drive. Can you not Maverick. make the all wheel? So the all wheel drive is only. I didn't. I missed that. It's, <clears> it's only gas. Yeah. Yeah. Front wheel drive if you want hybrid. Oh, that's a stinker. Well, that would. Yeah, mean but I, you know, I I dragged it like a couple thousand pounds of rocks once. I just filled the back of with <laughs> rocks of a Maverick, and I drove it home. And I had to do this twice because we need a lot of rocks. And that's the thing you you end up buying as a homeowner is just rocks. Um, and the first time I drove home, I'm like, yeah, this is fine. The second time, I'm like, oh, oh, there's a there's a button for when you're <laughs> so I turned on the little cargo button. I'm like, oh, I guess this is a little better. It was fine <laughs> both ways, no problem. <laughs> uh cool all right robbie what'd you have i drove the uh hold on let me make sure this is the right uh year let me check my monroney like super quick because i i wrote that i wrote it was this year but i'm gonna double check that i oh no i drove a 2023 not a 2024 which i wrote down i drove a 2023 range rover p have the range rover plug-in hybrid uh, so you get all the fancy of a Range Rover plus 51 miles of EV only range. That's a lot of miles. It is a lot of miles. Yeah. It is. It is. Uh, so, so, okay. So how it does this is that it has a pretty large battery, uh, you know, it, as far as, you know, P hevs go. So it has a 38.2 kilowatt hour battery of which 31.8 of it is available. So that's a lot. That's a really big that's a that's that's quite the battery for a PHEV. And what's interesting is that uh yeah, you can charge it at home, plug it into my little wall box, charge it overnight, hundred percent, blah, blah, blah. But this vehicle also has support for DC fast charging, up to fifty really? kilowatts. Yeah. So um, the second one I know of with that. The the Outlander is the only other one I know of that does that. Yeah. So I could you know, so you pull, you know, you take the you know, typically you just have the one little round. You know, the mm-hmm. level two charging port, but it has the little, uh, you pull the little thing out, boom, DC fast charging support, CCS. Wow. So I, I haven't, um, typically, I, we're, we're, we're recording a little early this week, and typically Saturdays are the days I test cars. Um, I do the testy tests. Um, so I haven't taken it to a DC fast charger yet. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. You know, I don't know what, what you know what the the takeaway would be. It was like, oh, it charged faster. Good job, Robbie. <laughs> but it, <laughs> it charges up to fifty kilowatts. Uh, Range Rover says you can go to forty minutes. You'll hit up to eighty percent. Um, you know, five hours with a seven kilowatt hour uh, wall box, um, you get a hundred percent on this thing. Which yeah, it's fine. Um, I have it. I have driven it around in EV mode. There's a weird thing where you start the car and you can't just put it into EV mode. You have to like drive it a little bit, then it'll mm-hmm. go into EV mode or EV only mode. Well, but you'll start the car and like hybrid mode is on, is default, and you can tell it's not the engine is not on. But I can't just put it in direct EV mode. Oh, so it's not it's not starting the engine at first. It's it's the le- it's letting you drive electrically, but in hybrid mode. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just like, man, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in high, it's essentially in, a, in it's electric mode, but British. I can't just, you, you know. but just put it in electric mode. Um, just be happy it works at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it does work. It's very, it's a, it's, it's so comfortable and squishy that it, it doesn't feel like it should be able to do all the off roady bits that it can do because it is, you know, it's a Range Rover. That's sort of its jam. It has a lot of buttons and settings for there's a whole button for waiting <laughs> there's you know you can see like where you're driving when you're off-road you know it has the those front facing cameras mm-hmm. it's got all the, the fancy bits for off-roading but then you're like inside a very fancy squishy vehicle and and and, and it has it's, what's yeah. really nice is it has all-wheel it's steering vehicle. which is standard <laughs> Um, so it's a, you know, it's a three row SUV. The second row is very fancy still third row. Eh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, 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 I've been doing, I have to do a lot of, uh, U-turns where I live for certain things sometimes. Um, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, no problem. Better, you know, it's like U-turns. It's like doing U-turns in my BRZ. That's what it's like. You know, big giant SUV. I'm like, look at this. <laughs> nice. Um, I, yeah, if you have a big vehicle, I think I've said this before, uh, especially a big, a large luxury vehicle, you need all wheel drive or all wheel steering. That's all there is to it. Just, just do that. Um, it's luxury. You're asking people to pay a lot of money, give them something fancy so they can get around. Yeah. If you're charging people a hundred thousand dollars and up, you know, for a vehicle, just 
Go ahead and put the all-wheel steering on there. Put the all-wheel steering in. Put it in. They'll be happier. It makes the vehicle feel a lot smaller than it is. Uh, it's easier to park. It's easier to pull out of parking spots. It's easier to do U-turns. It's all around. It just makes driving just so much nicer in, um, in something that is already nice. But also, you know, you got to get around. The world's a tight place. Yep. There's a lot of people out there on other cars. <sighs> Being nimble is pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the uh, the version I had, um, it was the SESWB, not SWV, with the Sisters with Voices, um, a really great uh, R&B band from the 90s. Uh, this is the SWB, so just a reminder. Uh, it has a... Uh, As in short wheelbase. Uh, it it has the uh, three liter turbo uh, six cylinder uh, engine, plug in hybrid, has 434 horsepower. Yeah, sure, 457 pound feet of torque, which you know all those things. Can you go fast? Psh, yeah. Uh, is it mostly if I needed to like climb up a mountain but still be like drinking tea? If I need to drink Earl Grey while driving uh, in the apocalypse, this is the car to get. <laughs> Uh, eight-speed automatic transmission with some paddle shifters. This, uh, sure, why not? Um, for all the <laughs> intense, yeah, there's nothing intense about this vehicle. To be honest, you just drive. You're like, oh, this is really nice. You're like that, that, that. And when you need to go fast, it just, yeah, it just coddles you, you wherever you need to. Go. It, it does. It coddles you everywhere you need to go. If you need to go to the store, great. If you need to go to to the uh, I don't know the golf course I think that's a thing people do uh, great if you need to go traveling up traversing up a mountain in order to escape uh, a lava flow sure it'll do that <laughs> whatever you want to do uh, a lava flow as one often needs to I mean that as one to often flow. needs to you know depending on where you live it, it might be right? true huh? yeah it's got it's got both you live got, in Iceland. So- or you know, on the Big Island, Hawaii. Yeah, if you live in the Big Island, yeah, that's a big. That's a that's a. I I, I look at homes on the Big Island a lot, and the ones that are under three hundred thousand, typically in the lava zone. Um, yeah. so <laughs> it's got like things like hill launch assist, low traction launch. It has air suspension, so things just you know when you get out, it like lowers itself, <laughs> raises itself. Um, twenty one inch alloy wheels, and uh, you could probably be fine with the. Uh, Whatever, smaller, but you do get a full size spare, which is nice. Of course, you don't. You don't actually want to go climbing up that mountain or trying to escape that lava flow with the twenty ones, because yeah, I just I I think those, we both those, we those slim little tires. You know, they're not going to do real well on that sharp uh, sharp rock. I'm yeah, cut it. The, the, the small tire. Yeah, yeah. I just the uh, yeah the small tire the <sighs> small tires get smaller tires or smaller wheels bigger tires. Uh, it's thirteen point one inch uh, touch screen. Um, JLR has this very uh, unique touchscreen uh, infotainment system where when you do things, it like fades in and out, and so you're never quite sure. <laughs> it's like, is this latency or not? And it's been like this for what, like eight years, seven years? For, it's been like this for a while, and it does everything. But everything you tell me to do is like she's a. <sighs> it's like a little. <sighs> <laughs> and what's interesting and something I really like is that you have physical controls for the climate. It's a little, it's a little dial, and it's a little dynamic uh, display on the dial. So it's if it's just at regular, it's you know hot and cold, you know seventy degrees, sixty degrees, whatever. But if you push it, now it controls your seat. So now you can like, oh, I want a ventilated seat or I want a heated seat. But if you push it and turn it, it like it does the same thing. It, it's the exact same. <sighs> <laughs> sort of in and it like fades in there, fades there's out your wheel bearings fades the back in for this week <laughs> it fades out and fades back in and by the time it does that i've already set it to like two on, on the heated seat <laughs> <laughs> so it fades in fades out and it's all boom two and then it has to catch up to me because i i, I don't i i'm i'm driving i don't have time for for fanciness <laughs> focus on the whole driving part. i don't have time for any sort of harry potter shenanigans i just want i just want things to happen <laughs> uh yeah so the msrp on this thing was is a one hundred ten thousand dollars five uh the version i drove one hundred twenty eight thousand four hundred seventy five dollars not cheap uh again it gets 51 miles per uh, it gets 51 miles 
of EV only range. Um, I haven't had a chance to test that thoroughly, but it does seem like that's pretty much on par with what. And when I did it to 100%, it was like, you have 61 miles of range. I'm like, wait, what? And the fact that I can't like turn it on when I stop, it's, it, yeah. So it's 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 kind of gonna it's gonna be tough to get to figure that out exactly, but just based on my experience, I I don't see why it wouldn't hit 51 miles to be honest. Um, once you deplete all of that uh, delicious electricity, uh, then you're down to 21 miles per gallon, which for a vehicle this so- this size with a it's not bad, but yeah, with a six cylinder in 21 here, like, oh that's pretty I mean, good. It's still, that's a- it's still operating as a hybrid at that point, so that's yeah. probably why you're getting 20 21. Yeah. Yeah, so it's you know it's it's a it it does have one of the um in the center console where you can put things in. It has the little cooler. Mm-hmm. I just oh, think I, love yeah. that. I would I would get the Ford Maverick over this just because that's who I am. But I would want that little cooler. <laughs> <laughs> the Ford Maverick but, with but your you aftermarket know, accessories. With a little, for, with a for, little cooler for for one hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars, you could buy a Maverick and take it somewhere and have somebody custom build a cooler from scratch and <laughs> install it in there. <laughs> And still well, we have, have probably a hundred thousand dollars left over. Mm-hmm. If Jace, if the JC Whitney catalog was still around, I could probably <laughs> get one of those for like eighty bucks. <laughs> for all the old school uh, car nerds, uh, JC Whitney would have. They had a little black and white like catalog. I don't even know where we got them. I guess at the store for like a nickel. I don't know <laughs> where we got the JC Whitney catalog. It just appeared everywhere. Yeah. Did, they did it come in the mail? Where they're, did we? We like we all had them. Yeah. I thought it came in the mail. Maybe it must have come there's, in the mail. There's still a jcwhitney.com. Oh, well, it, it, you you could buy things for your car that I think like eighty percent of it probably wasn't safe. <laughs> <laughs> it was like really cheap and stuff. Like some of it was credit. snake oil, but a lot of it probably most, wasn't safe. Most of it was snake oil. Most mm-hmm. of it was snake oil. Mm-hmm. It's it's like Harbor Freight. Like I, I I love Harbor Freight, but I'm not buying tools from Harbor Freight. <laughs> I like I buy like Craftsman or Snap On. What do you buy at Harbor Freight? They have you can buy sandpaper. You can buy like straps. Straps are pretty easy to like just build. Uh, um, what is it? Uh, zip ties. You can buy a lot of zip ties there. Um, oh the the um. But, but you don't. You definitely don't want to buy your jack stands from. Don't. Yeah, I wouldn't Freight. buy a jack stand. I went like a, two years ago or so. A, anything that has to like support weight, you know, or break. Anything you know. that could be the difference. Between yeah. Death, don't get it. There. Yes. Like a, yeah. Like you can buy sprayers for like car painting. Like a lot of um like hobbyists and like cosplay people and people who do props, they buy the the car spray. You know the the air sprayers there for paint. Yeah. The paint sprayers because they're really inexpensive and they actually work pretty well. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can buy there, but I wouldn't buy like a socket set because I don't want the you know the socket to snap and then my hand goes smashing into the side of a of a of an engine block, which is I've had that happen before. It's not good. I have so many scars on my hands from crap tools. <laughs> Even though my dad would buy me good tools, and then something would happen. I go, I'm going to buy it. I need to go buy this thing, I and I would buy a crap. Learn I'd buy a crap tool. As a 16-year-old uh, idiot, and then they would immediately break, and I'd always have, like, these scars, like, yeah, like I mean, knuckles. I, and I still have tools here that are almost as old as I am. You know, at, at, at a minimum, they're at least 40, 45 years old that are still, you know, I mean, you can see the, their age, but, you know, they are they work as well as they originally did. None of those were bought from either J.C. Whitney or Harbor Freight. <laughs> <laughs> buy just just invest in good tools yes craftsman if you're rich snap on uh yeah. <laughs> snap on is really expensive but you know they, there's a reason why they drive around a truck <laughs> yeah i mean there's a, a reason why people that that use tools to earn their living buy those tools yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. The tools so, that are the oldest so that's a, anyway so the the, the range rover i don't even know ran- where they came from like they yeah. don't even have labels on them anymore <laughs> Yeah, see those. Yeah, good old, good quality tool. Buy buy quality tools. It's gonna cost a little more, but it's gonna it's gonna work for you in the long run. Um, like a P have like a Range Rover P have. If you can afford afford the uh, one hundred twenty eight thousand dollar Range Rover P have, uh, get get some snap on tools. I don't know yeah. when you're gonna work on your Range Rover. Um, you're probably not the person who who fixes their car if you're buying this vehicle, but maybe you have a second cool car. Anyway, Range Rover P have uh, fifty one miles. That's great. More than most people drive in the, you know, average daily com- drive is like 37 miles for humans in this country. Um, I don't know how far dogs and cats drive. Um, you'd have to ask them. Uh, yeah, I, I really, I, I dig this car. I drove the regular gas version when it came out. 
Um, I was really excited about the PHEV. Um, I'm very excited about the um, electric one, just based on how well the PHEV um, performs. So there you go. Yeah. So just as a follow-up, uh, jcwhitney.com appears to now be you know a, a content site. There's all kinds of articles and stuff on here. Um, and there is a link at the top of the page that says shop JC Whitney, which redirects you to carparts.com. So carparts.com apparently bought the JC Whitney brand and okay. yeah, they just sell, you know, aftermarket stuff. I want to write something for JC Whitney now. Who do I talk to about <laughs> that? I don't know. These are all the tools. These are all the scars. I should just have pictures of the scars in my hand from things that I bought from JC Whitney. Oh, they got the that would fit right in in the either probably the garage tab or the culture tab. If you scroll down, it says catalog throwback, and it has all the insane, stupid thing. <laughs> has a bunch oh, of yeah. There you go. Hollywood mufflers for all your cars. The, the ocean liner blast horn. Ocean liner the, blast. The white wall kit. The end car it. coffee maker. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a whole gallery. Anyway, go to jcwhitney.com. And, and, and it's, it's yeah, just, scroll, scroll to the bottom of the page. You're going to have some, some good times. All right. <laughs> Did you know you can support Wheel Bearings directly? Head to patreon.com slash wheelbearingsmedia and you can become a patron today. Your contributions will help fund the platforms and tools we use to bring the podcast to you. And exclusives and improvements are already on the way thanks to your generosity. So if you want to be part of an automotive podcast like no other, head to patreon.com slash wheelbearingsmedia. Uh, okay, um, I had the 2024 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road. Uh, which is not to be confused with the TRD Pro, which has the really fancy suspended seat and everything. This is uh, this is sort of the the entry off road variant, sort of sort of entry. I guess the pre runner would actually be more the entry off road version. Um, and the one I had is one that you cannot have. You cannot buy. Um, you you cannot actually order one just like the one I had. Uh, because the one I had was still a pre-production model. It was probably one of the ones that was used for the drive program. Um, so not all of the parts were final production parts, you know, things like some of the trim pieces on the inside, you know, plastic pieces were still very smooth, shiny plastic. They were not grained. So they, these were clearly still, you know, prototype or validation parts, uh, just to, to work out the assembly process, but they weren't off the final finished tooling. Um, you know, so not going to judge the fit and finish of the interior. I mean, the fit was good. The finish in some places was you know, questionable, but again, these, these are pre-production parts, but the, the thing that really distinguishes the one I had from one that you can actually order is the color. Um, I had a TRD off-road in solar octane, which is this, awesome orange color. I love even the name Solar And But if you go to toyota.com and you try to configure a TRD off-road, you will not see Solar Octane listed as one of the options for that trim level. It's only available on the TRD pre-runner. Um, so weird. So you literally have a unicorn. You don't exist. Yes. Well, it exists. It's just not something you can buy. Uh, <laughs> so anyway... <laughs> Uh, but not for you. <laughs> yeah. So the the TRD off road um, is is what I had, and it's you know because the Tacoma is far and away the best selling mid size pickup on the market in in North America, um, and it sells more you know, probably twice as much as the next best selling trucks. Uh, they think last year they sold about two hundred and thirty thousand Tacomas. Uh, which is, you know, I think if you look at Col Chevy Colorado and Canyon, they're somewhere around 120,000. You know, in their good years, the Ranger was somewhere around 110, 120,000. Nobody's even close to Tacoma in sales. And because they sell so many Tacomas, um, you know, one of the things we didn't see this year with the, the transition to this all new Tacoma, because the Tacoma had been around in its previous form for quite a while. One of the things we didn't see is a, a reduction in the number of configurations. You know, when you look at New Ranger, the uh, Colorado Canyon, some of the others, you know, they dropped things like the the extended cab or different bed lengths um, or different engines uh, and even manual transmission options. Um, that's not the case with the Tacoma. 
So you can still get Tacomas in like a, an extended cab version. You can get it in what Toyota calls their double cab or a crew cab with either a five foot bed or a six foot bed. The one I had had the five foot bed. You can get a Tacoma with, and all the Tacomas now have a 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder. You can get it with an eight speed automatic transmission. And on most of the trims, also you have the option of a six speed manual. Um, and um, coming in a couple of months time is uh, a hybrid version. Uh, the iForce Max as, they, as Toyota calls it for their trucks. Um, and that's uh, even more powerful. Uh, so for what I will say right off the top, this Tacoma, the last time I drove a Tacoma, it was also a TRD off-road. Um, and interestingly enough, it was also an orange. I don't know if it was solar octane, but it was an orange, a shade of orange. Um, this is a way, way better truck than that one that I drove probably four or five years ago. Uh, I, I like this one so much more because the last time I drove a Tacoma, the suspension was kind of soft and floppy and, you know, going over bumps and going around corners, you feel everything moving around. And the way the previous generation Tacoma was set up, the seats kind of felt like they were on the floor. And so you have, have that leg straight out seating position, which is kind of weird in a truck. I don't mind it in my Miata, <laughs> not so much in a truck. Um, so, uh, you know, this one, you know, it's a little more upright, a little more what you expect in a truck, you know, especially if you're going to do go off road at all with it. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely got a better feeling to it. The interior, you know, aside from some of the pre-production parts that were still on this particular one that I was driving, you know, m much nicer layout. Um, you know, this one, the one that I had was pretty much loaded up, um, for for a TRD off road, you can actually get more expensive variants. Um, so I mean, there's the there's the limited, uh, which you know the the TRD off road starts at forty one thousand eight hundred dollars. The limited starts at fifty two thousand one hundred dollars, um, and then coming soon, once they after they launch the hybrid, will be the TRD Pro. We don't I don't know if they've announced pricing for that yet. But I'm guessing it's probably going to start somewhere in the mid 50s and you know uh, go up from significantly from there. Um, the the one that I had, even though it starts at forty you know, forty two thousand uh, dollars, it had the TRD Off Road Premium Package, which gives you a whole bunch of stuff. It's a yeah. You know, they have <laughs> going through the configurator. Uh, there's a lot of different variations you can get of, uh, of the TRD off-road um, or, and actually many of, especially the off-road ones, but many of the other trims as well. And so there's a bunch of different TRD off-road premium packages uh, that are, that are available. Oh, wait. Okay. I just went back to the configurator again. Apparently you, now you can get solar octane. So since I started oh. talking, now solar octane has showed up as a color option for the <laughs> charity offer. So ignore what job I was just saying about the color. Now good job, Toyota. Yeah. Good job. So they they give you the option of picking a lot of a la carte options. Or there's a bunch of different bundles. So there's a TRD off-road upgrade package, TRD upgrade off-road upgrade package with options, TRD off-road upgrade. It, it's just it's crazy. Or if you just want everything, just get the TRD off-road premium package with options. Um, I had the um, premium. Let's see. Okay, so there's two. There's actually two that are labeled here as TRD off-road premium package with options. One is ten thousand thirty dollars. The other one is ten thousand ninety dollars. The only difference between the two is the, the the more the slightly more expensive one adds mud guards. The one I had did not have mud guards on it, but it does have um, the uh, uh, the five foot bed. Uh, the Softex trimmed seats, which is Toyota's branding for their vinyl, um, with heated and ventilated eight-way power adjustable front seats, leather trim steering wheel, the 14-inch Toyota multimedia display, so the big center touchscreen, um, which is, and you know, this generation of Toyota infotainment is really quite good. Um, and it has support for wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I actually miss with the car that's in my driveway right now. Um, multi-terrain monitor so a bunch of external cameras uh jbl premium audio 
It's got a flex, the JBL Flex portable speaker, which means it has a Bluetooth speaker that sits in a little pocket in the top the top center of the dashboard that you can pop out and take it outside when you get to your campsite. So you can have a, a portable Bluetooth speaker with it's you there. Kind of fun. That's so uh, wire, wireless Qi charger, dual zone climate, um, all the, the usual um, uh, driver assist features, the towing technology package, including the integrated trailer brake controller, the power open and close tailgate. So on the, the left rear tail light uh, in the, the center, there's a little rubber area there. Uh, and there's a switch under that. If you press that and you have the, the key fob on you, the tailgate will just gently power down. Press it again. Tailgate gently powers itself back up. Very nice. Um, digital key capability. Um, this one also has the uh, front uh, stabilizer disconnect mechanism. Uh, so if you're doing doing your off-roading, you can disconnect the stabilizer bar and get a little more articulation. So over the bigger bumps and rocks and stuff. Uh, there's also a couple of skid plates. This one, the, the off-road doesn't have as many skid plates as what you'll get on the TRD Pro. It also doesn't have you know as much ground clearance as you'll get with the TRD Pro or as big a tires. I think they're or call their 31 inch tires on this. Um, so, you know, it'll handle uh, more aggressive off roading than what you can do with the Maverick Tremor, not as aggressive as what you can do with the TRD Pro. Mm -hmm. um, and I went bombing around some back roads with it, you know, uh, you know, some, some dirt roads where we had some rain and they haven't been regraded yet. So there's some pretty hefty potholes and cavities in there. And it just, floats over this stuff no problem at all it feels so much better to drive than the last generation tacoma did on those very same roads um so good decently comfy seats um i pretty much like almost everything about this truck with one exception dun, dun, dun. yeah fifty four thousand four hundred and twenty five dollars <sighs> it's got all the things. That's that's what happens. Uh, and you know what? Yeah. Toyota people are going to pay that. They'll be more than happy to pay that. Oh, money. they're going to totally do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the, the Tacoma has gotten more expensive, but I mean, so have all the competitors. Although, you know, I mean, this this is in a lot of ways, um, you know, comparable to something like a Colorado Trail Boss, which you can get. Although, I mean, if you for, forego the premium package, uh, you know, you're going to be in the mid forties anyway, and that's the price of a trail boss. So, uh, I guess, you know, it's not, it's not that much more than the competition, uh, but it can vary. It, if you're not careful with the options sheet, it can get very expensive on you. Um, uh, and the, uh, our, our pals at, uh, at, um, TFL, they actually bought one of these, uh, about a month ago. They got a very early one. They, it's like their VIN number is like 319 or something like oh. that. Uh, and so they've been doing all kinds of testing with it. They already have a bunch of videos up with it. Um, earlier this week, they posted a video where they went off-roading not far from their office in, in Boulder on a trail that they go all the time. And they took the, the Tacoma and, uh, Andre's, uh, uh, personal Colorado trail boss and something broke in the four wheel drive system as, as, uh, Roman was oh, no. trying to climb up, uh, you know, uh, a, a particular uh, rock. Um, there was a sudden pop. Ooh. Oh. Uh, and then the front wheels would not drive anymore. Oh, that's uh, good. That's, and that's so bad. He was, yeah, it's really bad when you're up on the side of a mountain um, that's covered with snow and ice, you know, with very little grip. Um, and you're on a relatively narrow trail. Um, I will put a link in the show notes to Did the video. Did he get out of it? Was it crazy? They, they got home. Um, <laughs> they got home. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't die. Is that what you're telling me? That's they, all they, did, they didn't it's die. Sad. They're they're still alive, <laughs> uh, or at least they were they were alive. You know, as of earlier this week. You know, uh, now who knows? <laughs> who can uh, say now? It's been a few days. It could have gotten into all kinds of trouble. Yeah, uh, you know, this was a, a very early build one that they had. Um, you know, and it's unusual for something like that to have. And yeah, you know, this was not a particularly extreme scenario that they were in. Yeah. Um, so I'll be curious to. Uh, to see the follow up and learn exactly what happened. What what did Roman break on on their new truck? What did Roman? But that could be its own set. What did Roman break? Yeah, that's a whole show. What did <laughs> <Yeah>. Roman break? <clears throat> you know, it's it's one of the things that I tell people, and I you know I'm not going to follow my own advice on this, but 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> try not to get the first. Try not you, to get the first. Try not to get the first follow year. Your advice? <laughs> I, no, no one should follow whatever. Whatever I'm saying, just ignore it. Um, but try not. Except don't get for the this. first year. Don't yeah. buy the first year of a car. It's always the first, I, there's I, always something weird um, going on with the first year of a car. Um, I, the, now, and I'm, I'm telling you this, and I'm still going to try like the Dickens to get the ID buzz when it comes. <laughs> 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 but um you, you know if you, it, you just maybe wait till the second year the first year there's always something that's really maybe, even it's a little fight. small but there's always something that For, they forget figure the out. fomo you know there will they will still be well in most cases and you know unless it's <laughs> like fisker or something they will probably oh, yeah. still be building that whatever it is you want next year yeah you know? and and you probably won't have to pay a dealer markup, which, you know, a lot of early Tacoma buyers apparently are getting charged pretty substantial dealer markups. So, yeah, wait a year. Wait a year. if Yeah. And I, again, I know we're, we're talking to car enthusiasts and I am clearly not. I, I, if, if it wasn't for the, the, the oil pan issue and the fact that the uh, markups were so insane, I would have bought a first year BRZ. <laughs> of, the le- of the latest generation but we found out a the markups were insane you know 50 percent of the price is fifteen thousand dollar markup on a thirty thousand dollar car <laughs> no and also the oil pan issue where you you know the, um where you essentially got to take the oil pan off and scrape stains and, and then put the put a new uh, gasket on little there details, little details um but because i'm waiting to the second year or third year if i decide to sell my my current brz and by the, the latest generation then um most of that stuff will be f- figured out see hopefully system works but again i'm gonna like as soon as the, the, i'm figuring out how to get that that id bus. <laughs> so <laughs> so let me ask you a question robbie Uh-oh. If, if you if you can't get that first year id buzz are you going to try and wait for a first year apple car um, well, you know, I think we've been – so I used to work at Mac Life magazine, which used to be Mac Addict. And every year we had someone – this is, oh my god, a really long time, like 2006, 2007. So it's been a while. Um, we would have someone uh, render up the Apple car. And every year, one the, like the guy who ran like the whole tech division, he would write a big old article about the Apple car. And every year it was like, all right, sure. Now, so that, so from like the mid 2000s, so for almost 20 years, we've been talking about this mysterious and mythic Apple car. But no and more. then it became more and more real as the years go, <laughs> have gone on. And at, at, at some point they got so tired of your, you guys whining about this. They said, okay, let's just start a project to Fine. develop a car. Project yeah. Titan. And that was about 2014, 15 that they did that. And uh, then, yeah, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> so did I mean both of you are are Mac users? You're, you're both iPhone users. I'm not a uh, Mac user. Oh, that's right. Oh, I, have, you, I forgot you I use have the an surface, iPhone, but, but not that, a Mac. Okay. Yeah. I have okay. I have like five iPhones. I have two DJ Macs, two DJ MacBook Airs, my work, my whole, my personal MacBook Air. That's like the one that I do things with, and then my work. My work computer is a MacBook Pro. So, yeah, I'm a Mac. And then, of course, I worked at Mac, yeah. <laughs> Mac Life. So, <laughs> so, would you know, given the opportunity, would you consider buying an Apple car if such a thing existed? No. I mean, it depends on what it is. I don't need another sports car. That's Nicole the thing. I, thought, no, no, no. I don't need another sports car. I, I, I you know, I like the, my little sports car that I have. But if it was like just a nice car, mm that worked Mm -mm. then yeah yeah i'd be fine with it you know second year i i have the iphone because i feel like for phones it works for me and i like my little world and i once i bought one many years ago i know how they work they only change a little bit from time to time and like that i'm happy with it i had a macbook something once upon a time and i hated it and I, well, I, well, I, well, let's I, preface this with every week when we start doing the podcast. <laughs> that was, my MacBook would literally broke for no reason. Like I remember it breaking into like the screen just cracked. Like it's just sitting there I'm like, where did that happen? And it was outrageous to fix the, the, despite the ins and outs of like Microsoft stuff, having to reboot and everything. Once I get them, they work. Like they physically, the components of them, <laughs> whether so you I had one with a broken, with a broken screen. 
Like the Mac once. once the broken screen, and then that's all I, it took to, to, to that's all it took. turn you off forever. It's all the, it was also Nicole like, accidentally oh, no. dropped her MacBook and forgot no, about it. I didn't. And I and I never found it easy to use. I always found it not. You, you realize that what actually happened is that Russ probably sat on it, right? Uh, Russ sat on your MacBook. Oh, it. It's but a I, secret. I am. <laughs> He's gonna hear this. Of the Mac products, I like my iPhone. I love my iPhone. So your concern is that the windshield will just crack while you were driving. I just don't want the simple. I'm putting air quotes. No one can see the simplification that that Mac stuff. I don't like. Well, it, it would still be a car. Mm, but it would be a. It would be. My and you still use. It would just car. be CarPlay in the car. Nobody. Nope. 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 I don't want it. I don't want it. You can't make me. I don't want it. I'm not making you. Well, I'm just, fortunately, I'm just questioning you your call. logic. Because <laughs> I like the car. Logic. Go buy it's, a car. Is a visual- it, it ain't, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. Sorry. No one's going to. Oh, I'm so sorry. They, they're going to make one, though, and they're going to force you to buy it. And they're going to oh. take all your other cars away. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks in. And raving. No. After, you know, better part of a decade and yes. probably upwards of $10 billion spent uh this bloomberg reported that this week uh and uh, a memo was sent around inside of apple saying yeah we're shutting down project titan uh you're all going to go work on generative ai uh, womp, womp. So, do you think that, was any were you really surprised do you think anybody thought the apple car was going to happen like genuinely do, it, I, it, well, there's apple, a lot of people who really wanted it to happen but so there's people who wanted want it to happen and then there's people and there's there, they have a lot of money yeah, Apple yes. can afford to to to, to like to do this versus actual happen. What would it, until now we know it's not. What would you have said before this? The percentage I, so, of succeeding. Are you surprised? I guess ba- ba- back in February of 2015, when the first were the first reports of Project Titan started to leak out, and what what actually you know were the were the first public reports actually came out was when um uh company called a123 systems uh which is a battery company which is now owned by a chinese company um sued apple for poaching a bunch of their employees including mujib jazz who um was i i first met him in 2007 when he was at ford uh and he's now the you know co-founder of our next energy another battery company Mujib was one of the people listed in these reports. Uh, he was the CTO of A123 at the time that um, w- had been hired away by Apple. And so I reached out to Mujib over LinkedIn. We exchanged you know, three or four messages. And then he went radio silent for like the next five years <laughs> because he was now working at Apple. <laughs> yeah. No more communications no more. Um, until after he left Apple in 2020. Um, and you know, so at the, over the course of 2015, I wrote several articles on my personal blog, and basically, I was always extremely skeptical that Apple would ever actually follow through and produce a vehicle. Because basically, you know, because it does not fit with their business model. Apple likes to only go into market segments where they can make a lot of money. You know, they only. They only produce stuff where they can get like 35, 40% profit margins on the products. iPhones, you know, 35, 40% profit margins. Macs, same thing. Earbud, AirPods, um, you know, Apple TV, every, you know, all that stuff. They're making huge margins. This Big is why piles of cash. This, this is why they have a pile of cash the size of Mount Everest. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, you know, the auto industry at best, you know, most automakers make single digit profit margins a, f- a, a very few like Ferrari, Porsche get into the, the low 20 percent range. Nobody gets into the kind of profit margins that, that Apple does. Mm-hmm. I think the main reason why they were going down this path is, you know, for for Wall Street, for the, the financial markets, they want to see growth, uh, you know, and revenue growth. And, you know, there's only 8 billion people on the planet. So there's only so many iPhones you can sell, you know, eventually well, everybody's got, eventually everybody's got five. five. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't really need any more iPhones. Mm-hmm. So, you know, well, I'm still rocking the iPhone 11. <laughs> wow. So, he really has one. He just showed it to us. Look at that. One. I have an one. iPhone 11. So yeah, I have a red iPhone 11 and I'm just now because the, uh, 
uh, after years of dropping it literally daily. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the last six months I've just been dropping this thing nonstop. But like, um, like that little ear thing where you can, when you talk on the phone, the, yeah. the speaker, the, the, the little ear speaker doesn't yeah. work very well now. <laughs> um, so now everything has to be. Who I have talks to use on like the phone though, like a phone. Well, oh. I'm a reporter and I call people yeah. and talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> and I get calls from reporters all the time. So yeah, um, what else is is yeah? It's and the battery is just trashed now. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 been a while. So y- yeah, I'm not exactly like helping Apple out with money, <laughs> but but you know, <laughs> a- a- you know, Apple likes to control their whole ecosystem. They um, you know they they don't want people modifying their products. Um, you know, they like stuff with big profit margins. None of which is particularly aligns Car. particularly well with the auto industry, but you know because cars are very expensive, you know even even by Apple standards, you know, and the the volumes are much lower than the number of phones they sell, but the potential revenue growth would be huge for Apple, and so that's I think that's one of the big reasons they were looking at it, but they just couldn't find a way to make it work with the rest of their business model. You know, I mean, they tried to do, you know autonomous vehicles um you know i think what they probably would have wanted to do was have uh vehicles that they didn't actually have to sell to consumers just provide it as a you know a very premium mobility service uh with automated vehicles that come to you when you when you need a ride so kind of a robo taxi service but for people with a lot more money um and offer it you know only in places where you know where they could make it work and and have enough of an affluent audience to pay a premium price for it but they couldn't get that technology working just as nobody else has really gotten it working. And so they finally just gave up. Yeah. I mean, they have the money to do this. Yeah. They have plenty of money. They could have partnered with Magna to build it. So they could have, you know, there's, there's companies they could have partnered. I mean, they had the opportunity. I just don't. Yeah. Again, we, the, the profit margins on cars are just super thin. And I think they were just like, well, you know what, this is, Let's just keep trying. I think it was like one of those things. You're like, I'm just going to keep working on this thing, even though you know you're never going to finish it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're never going to finish that novel, but you're going to keep banging away. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, now, now, you know, they've got to do the the generative AI stuff, you know, to compete with Google and OpenAI and Meta and Microsoft and everybody else. So, you know, they had to pull those people off there and have them work on you know, something that will lie to you when you ask it a question. Finally, <laughs> finally, something well, st- that instead lie of to. Siri, just saying, I'm sorry, I can't, I don't know the answer to that. You know, here's just, a, here's a, here's a Google link or a web link. You know, now it'll, now it'll just make something up for you. Yeah. Or, or as they call it hallucinate. No, that's yeah. a lie. Your thing's lying to us. <laughs> Stop coming up with like fancy little it's hallucinating. Um, okay. It's not my cousin that Burning Man. Okay, it's it's lying to me. Burning <laughs> Man, it's a lying liar. <laughs> lying, lying, lying machine. Uh, so no Apple car coming. Oh no. Well, well, eh, whatever. But, but there is another electric car that's coming this <laughs> summer. A, a bunch of people got some good jobs for a while. A bunch yeah. of Porsche people went over there. Oh, yeah. And then you know, they, they, they got to put Apple on their resume mm-hmm. and then go work yeah. at a real car company. Yeah. yeah, they they left a car company with Apple, went back to a car company. It's, yeah. Uh, Essentially, it was, yeah, what happened. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, let's see. Uh, in in uh, July of 2021, um, Stellantis had an EV day. And at that time, um, you know, they talked about their, their electrification plans. And uh, mm-hmm. Tim Kaniskis, uh, who... Uh, was then and is still now the CEO of the Dodge brand, uh, said, we are not going to sell electric cars. We are going to sell <laughs> American e-muscle. Mm-hmm. Um, and sure, dude. Said, yeah, right, whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then in August of 2022, they showed a concept car that they called the Dodge Charger Daytona SRT. And it had an exhaust system on an electric muscle car and it called it the Fratsonic chambered exhaust. Well, now it's coming to market. It's going Um, on sale uh, um, this summer. And uh, I saw the production version of it a couple of days ago at a secret location somewhere in Detroit. 
Um, and uh, it is almost entirely unchanged from that concept we saw 18 months ago. Good job, Josh. Ba- basically, the concept we saw is what they're building. Wait, wait, uh, wait. Is this still too loud? We Well... It it will yes it will be too loud. We don't know exactly <laughs> how loud or exactly what it's going to sound like because they said okay. they're still fine tuning that and they didn't want to play that for us just yet. Uh, but it will it will be loud. There's no, uh, oh my gosh. Okay, fine. But, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I'm fine with like throwing the fake sounds on the EVs. That's fine. Don't make it so loud that it's it's actually bad can, for people. You can turn it off too. Yeah, but it shouldn't. It, it shouldn't like default be so loud that people standing next to the car are gonna need ear ear <laughs> need earplugs. Dodge. Uh, it's American e muscle. Uh, fine, yeah. whatever. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, the uh, the Charger Daytona is coming, and the concept that they showed was a two door with a hatchback. Interestingly, you know, it looks like, you know, it looks like a, you know, traditional three box design, you know, hood, uh, cabin and, and trunk, but you know, it's a lift back. Um, but they also said, yeah, we're also going to build a four door. Um, and the four door, which they showed us, uh, has exactly the same profile. It's the same length, uh, has this exact, the roof sheet metal is common between the two door and the four door. The only difference is they've moved the door aperture, you know, move the B pillar up a little bit and added the a pair of extra doors. So you have easier access to the rear. Um, you know, and the, at launch the, this summer, uh, they're going to have the two door only the four doors coming end of the year, early 25. Um, they're going to have two, two trim levels, the RT, um, which along with the direct connection stage one package on there, so it will have uh, up to 497 horsepower from the two motors. Uh, and then the uh, scat pack, which will have still the same two motors, but 670 horsepower. Scat pack. Uh, the, the scat pack will go zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds, quarter mile in 11.5, which uh, means that it is actually faster than the old, the previous Charger um Hellcat Red Eye, um, because you know it's got more torque uh, than it's an the, EV. the Hellcat, <laughs> and it, it's an it's an EV with instant torque from zero RPM, and it's all wheel drive now because you know the 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 char- the previous Charger Hellcats were all rear wheel drive, so you had the traction problem. Now you can put all that torque to the ground through all four wheels, and so this thing's going to go like crazy. Um, Was it a problem though? I mean, if you want to do burnouts, I mean that's literally the car to buy. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, now you can do a burnout from all four corners. That's oh, true. And they'll drive and, it in the snow. And there's there's also the you know it's got a bunch of different drive modes like the donut mode and the drift mode you know which basically makes it I know, either primarily I know. or all rear wheel drive. I know donut mode is to to do donuts in it, but I really want donut no, mode. I want to push that, and I just want donuts to arrive at my car. Or it just showed you at, like the drive. location every drive you to a donut all shop. All the places that you can like, hello, local donut shop. Where would you like your donuts delivered, Bam? Well, that's, well that, that's the beauty of a software defined vehicle is <laughs> you can update that. I could. You can, update, you can have that as an option. Make that an optional. Actually, obtain donuts delivered to me mode. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So the. Uh, uh, so the two door RT and Scat Pack arrive this summer. Um, then the four door uh, starts production around the end of the year, goes on sale early in twenty five, uh, and then sometime in twenty twenty five they will add uh, an as yet unnamed trim level that will have what they refer to as the the Banshee powertrain, and that's what was in the concept. So that will have something more than six hundred and seventy horsepower. <laughs> which you know a uh, number higher what than- yes <laughs> so it'll a have- larger 671 <laughs> it'll probably be somewhere between 800 and a thousand horsepower i'm guessing but it only plays Susie and the banshees so yeah. i'm i'm down yeah. with that to be honest <laughs> do you need all the power no but i do love me some Susie. so here we go <laughs> one th- one thing i like about the fact they they, they showed us some stuff you know because you have the lift back now instead of just a trunk um you know they had one of the cars that they had on display there had an electric racing cart, uh, go kart in the back, you know, so you fold down the back seats, 
had an electric racing cart sitting in the back of it. Um, you could also have, you, you know, for a track day, you can put your four track wheels and tires in the back with the seats folded down. You got enough room for that. So you can swap out your, your track tires and your street tires. Um, when, uh, when asked about range, uh, Tim Kaniskas said, muscle car buyers don't care about fuel economy. Nobody cares about that. Um, you know, so these things are not equipped with, you know, some kind of fancy low rolling resistance tires or, or anything like that. Um, the scat pack has, uh, it, the scat pack with the track pack, uh, has three uh, 20 inch wheels with 305 wide, uh, front tires and 325s on the rear, uh, Goodyear, uh, Eagle F1s, um, you know, high performance summer tires. Um, the, this thing still has the, what they call the R wing in the front. So there's the slot in the, the front, uh, you know, it, where the grill would be, where the grill would normally be between the headlights. Uh, and it opens up. And so you've got this kind of wing there and then it flows the air up over the top of the car, uh, to generate, reduce drag and generate some downforce, um, get the Fratsonic exhaust, um, in the interior, you know, same, same basic interior we saw on the, on the concept, uh, the RT starts with a 10 inch instrument cluster, 12 and a half inch, uh, touchscreen center touchscreen, um, on the scat pack, the instrument cluster display grows to 16 inches, uh, very nice looking displays. Um, what else? Uh, um, no word on pricing. Um, these are going to be built at the, uh, the Windsor assembly plant where they also build Pacifica minivans. Um, is a, a 100.5 cubic foot or cubic foot 100.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, That's a lot. Yes. Um, so the RT is going to be EPA rated at 317 miles of range, which is given the performance, you know, is pretty reasonable. That's good. Uh, and even the scat pack uh, will have a range of 260 miles, uh, which again, for something that goes zero to sixty in three point three seconds, quarter mile and eleven and a half, it's not not too shabby. You know, I mean, it's get this thing's got big fat tires on it, good. so uh, so not not bad at all. Um, and then also coming at some point in twenty twenty five. Oh, one thing I should note: everything I've talked about so far, this is the Charger Daytona, um, and that all the electric chargers have that Daytona badge on there. What's also coming? in 2025 is the Dodge charger six pack, which does not have a battery electric drivetrain. It will have the three liter hurricane twin turbo inline six. Um, so the rumors about uh, an internal combustion version of the new charger were true. Um, and uh, one way you'll be able to tell that one apart from the, um, from the electric version is again, no Daytona name on it. Uh, and the R wing is gone because instead of that, sl the hood sloping down underneath the wing, the engine's going to be there. Uh, so uh, they'll have a 420 horsepower uh, base version of that in the, the standard output and 550 horsepower uh, Hurricane uh, for the high output, uh, which is a little more than the power output that they have in the Ram and the Wagoneer. It's got back. My only bummer is that it's it charged peak charging is 183, 183 that's, kilowatts. That's a yeah, bummer. that's that's on on these first versions because uh, they still have a 400 volt electrical system yeah, on there. They're still using the 400. The volt. the Banshee will have an 800 volt electrical system and will charge faster. Yeah, so that's a that's kind of a bummer. but you know most of these folks you know you're going to charge it at home and then you're going to go to the uh, on ramp by my house and then you're going to drive like a maniac and make a lot of noise because that's all I hear all day. Every day is chargers <laughs> driving brum, <laughs> and John brum, taking off. See why you're like, is it going to be too loud? I don't want it to be loud. Well, also, I'm concerned about hearing. There, well, there uh, is a stealth mode, you know, so if you want to sneak out of your neighborhood no early in the morning, gonna, I'm, yeah, they'll use it at home but or, or come home late, on the road, you know, yeah, you can turn on the stealth mode. Yeah. So, yeah, but you know, it looks cool. It's exactly what Charger, you know, what the with what this what this market wants. Yeah. Something that looks cool, something that goes fast, something you're like, ah, high efficiency wheels, <laughs> low rolling resistance. Yeah. That's for chumps. We got a thing that's scat pack. It's like <laughs> a pack of poop from animals in the forest. It's 
same. <laughs> loud, it's loud. a it's a weird yeah. Loud, fast, and and bold. Loud, fast, bold, and named after poop. <laughs> <laughs> poop. Or scatting. Huge Ella Fitzgerald uh, fans I over there. I literally never thought of it that way, but I like that better, so I'm going to go with it. Get up, up, up. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> that's what I want the sound effect to be when you hit the gas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get up, up, up. Boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's free, Dodge. Go for it. <laughs> send me i don't know 500 bucks i think i think that's that's a that's a 500 dollar idea <laughs> so we'll we'll be we'll be driving looking forward to driving the uh the new charger daytona uh probably late this summer probably sometime so, later august or september time frame so here's a question do we think the charger or the id buzz will be available for us to drive first charger mm. wow <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. just I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be the charger yeah, that would be my. I've guess. driven the short wheelbase ID, but it's a vehicle they're actually building. Yeah, just I know. Throw some extra. I, oh, okay. <sighs> they they even have self driving ones running around Austin, Texas. I know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. I think it's the short wheelbase ones they're using. They they are. Yeah, they're using the short yeah. wheelbase for that testing. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I know. Yeah, so that's the uh, the Dodge Charger Daytona. Um, what else did uh, what else did Tim say? Um, yeah, I mean he's he seems to be real excited about this car. It'll um, oh it will uh, it li- initially at least it will not be eligible for the tax credit if you buy one because uh, at launch for for about the first year or so of production the battery packs the battery packs are supplied by Samsung SDI and they will initially be coming from South Korea. Um, LG and Samsung, uh, have a joint venture. Actually, they have two joint venture battery plants under construction in Kokomo, Indiana. Um, and the first of those should be coming online roughly middle of next year. Um, and once that comes online, then it will, they'll be, um, uh, bring, they'll, they'll have the, uh, um, the battery packs coming from there and then it'll be eligible. But for now, if you lease one, You'll be able. They'll do the pass through of the the tax credit, so you can okay. get a break on that and and get the full tax credit with a lease, but not with a purchase. Um, get the then, lease. Yeah, a few years you'll be able to get the eight hundred volt version. <laughs> well, that, that's supposed to be coming next year. Yeah, but uh, I mean that's but the, that's oh. on the Banshee. Yeah, yeah. You want the Daytona eight hundred volt version. Yeah, the, the regular old I can afford it one. The Banshee is going to be the regular old. I've sold everything I own <laughs> to buy the Banshee well, version. One one thing one thing that uh, somebody asked at the uh, the event on uh, Thursday was uh, you know Jeep you know was previously announced you know they're they're putting in um, chargers uh, uh, EV chargers at various trailheads around the country where Jeep owners like to go and go off roading. Uh, and so, um, Tim was asked, you know, is Dodge going to put in chargers at tracks at drag strips and, and road courses? And he said, you know, hadn't even really thought about that, but that's a hell of a good idea. Damn right. It's a hell of a good idea yeah. and make it well, happen. Make it so <laughs> well, one of the, one of the things they have in the, uh, in the infotainment system is the, uh, the so-called race prep mode. So you can go in there and precondition the battery so if it's uh if you are uh at if you're going if you're a drag strip and you're gonna be drag racing it will actually pre-warm the battery to get it to the optimal temperature so you get maximum power out of the battery um and uh if you set set it for uh racetrack then what it actually does is cool down the battery initially because the battery will warm itself up when once you're out on the track, you know. So they want to cool it down a little bit, you know, so you have longer endurance uh, on a track day. Um, but yeah, they should they should definitely put some DC fast chargers, especially at drag strips. I mean, oh yeah, p- people are going to take these things to drag strips and yeah. have all kinds of fun with them. So yeah, no, I, I like the way it looks. It, it's actually quite a bit larger. Than the current charger or the out the, the previous charger, it's eight inches longer. Um, pretty it's a big car. Yeah, it is. It doesn't look as big as it is, but it's 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 large, um, and it's also very heavy. 
Um, it's like, well, it's got a hundred kilowatt hour. Battery. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like 5,800 pounds. <sighs> yeah. And the well, fact, you know, it's a charger. So, so no it's, one's turning, no one's turning left or right in these things. Yeah. They're just going straight. <laughs> You're fine. It's, you know, it's, it's 1300 pounds more than a charger Hellcat. Um, and it still accelerates faster. So, yeah. But, you know, Kaniskas did say that not only is this going to be the, the quickest charger ever, but also the fastest. So it'll accelerate faster than the, any Hellcat charger, but it'll also be better on the track, too. So we'll see. That'll be interesting to see. It'll be yeah. fun to drive. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. What should we talk about next? Um, oh, so uh, there's a solar eclipse coming up. Uh, you guys have any plans for the eclipse? None. Um, no. <laughs> I'll forget until like the day before, and then I'll make that little box thing, and then I'll watch it. <laughs> I'll make the box thing. Uh, um, or if I'm smart, I'll buy the glasses like I did one yeah. year. Unfortunately, I'm I'm gonna miss it. I I could actually just drive about 40, 50 miles south of where I am and get into the uh, um, into the the zone of totality. Uh, which will be passing through. Actually, it actually cuts across just like the southeast corner of Michigan. But if mm-hmm. I drove down into Ohio, I could you know get a longer period of totality. Except I will be unfortunately somewhere else that day because I have a, a speaking engagement. So I'm going to miss it. <gasps> well, now but, I'm going to look at my calendar. But if you cross it, across the very tip of New it's, Hampshire, it's April, April 8th. Canada. April so. 8th. All right, I got nothing going on that day. Uh, have- if if you own a Ford Bronco. And actually at this point it's probably too late. It's probably sold out. But if you own a Ford yeah. Bronco, uh, you can go, you can get a package for the, uh, the Bronco off rodeo facility, um, which is near Austin, which is the, the first one that they opened. That's oh the my one, gosh. When they, when they did the, uh, the launch drive for the Bronco a couple of years back, that was where we, we went to and we did mm-hmm. some off-roading with it there. They are off. Ford is offering, uh, a package uh, for nineteen hundred and ninety five dollars um, that gets you two nights of camping for up to four people, uh, five meals, um, and uh, sixty guided uh, Bronco off rodeo trail drive slots uh, to campers on a first come first served basis. Um, and uh, this is all on uh, includes you know the day of the eclipse um, and where the um, where the Bronco off rodeo facility is it is on, right in, in the middle of the 115 mile wide path of totality for the eclipse. So you'll, you'll get about uh, a little over four minutes of total eclipse uh, that you can view from there. That's really cool. I mean, that'd yeah. be fun if you're a Bronco owner and you just like were free and could have like, why the heck not? that will be yeah. fun. Whoever goes to that, it's going to be a fun crew. Like, hey, honey, let's go to the Bronco off rodeo and watch the clips. Like, that's going to be people who are just like, let's have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Four people, five hundred bucks each, and then you get food, yeah. five meals, it's camping, not just, uh, be a camping. Just yeah, yeah. Fun. It just if you're like be- one dude who's doing it for two thousand, uh, that's sad. But if you got like three friends, <laughs> hey. I'm- you know, if you well, got a Bronco and a couple of grand, I'm sure you bucks. can find three friends. You got yeah. a place, you get to see the eclipse. Yeah, the first time I, when I said that, that was my original, oh my God, was I saw the price. <laughs> but now I'm like, oh, all right, you know. if you That's, you know, that's actually not eclipse. a bad deal. It's not crazy. Yeah. It's not two cheap, nights, not two night camping experience mm-hmm. and five meals. So, you know, it's not cheap. So it's but, your food and it's no. your camping and it's the driving off road, you know, all the stuff. And then you get to see the eclipse, which will be fun. So it's. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it's not cheap, but it's not. It's okay. not cheap, but it's not crazy. Like a hotel right. room, like a hunt, like a cheap, cheap hotel room that you'll probably get murdered in is like a hundred bucks a night. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's two hundred bucks like per you person. Probably won't get. Or if murdered. you don't get murdered, you'll get you know eaten alive by the bed bugs. So. One yeah. Of the other. Oh yeah, you'll get the bed bugs, but and you get to bring those fun. home, which is a fun ba- a bonus. Yeah. Uh, and infest okay. the rest of your home. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's the adventure that lives on. Yeah, it's the adventure that never stops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay um well let's yeah. stick with let's stick with ford for a couple more minutes um the uh do you remember the ford supervan i think we talked about it when they first the, la- the latest generation supervan that they launched last year um the um 
uh, they've been doing a bunch of stuff with it. They took it to uh, uh, the Pikes Peak Hill Climb last year. And a couple of weeks ago, they took it down to Australia, the latest version of it, down to Australia to uh, Mount Panorama, where they run the, the Bathurst 12 hours race. And after the race, they put Romain Dumas, who is an amazing um, race car driver. He, back in 2017 or 18, I think, um, he set, uh, he took the, uh, um, uh, the VW IDR um, race car that they built, an electric race car, and set an all-time record going up Pikes Peak with it and set records at various other places. Well, he, they Ford hired him to drive this electric van, sort of, sort of a van. It's kind of van shaped, not really a van, but it's van shaped thing. Roughly van shaped, yeah. Yeah, um, and uh, he, uh, it's... he he drove it around the uh, the Ma- the Mount Panorama track, which is about a four mile track, um, which I've driven countless times in Gran Turismo and and uh, uh, real racing. Um, and set a new record. And this was like three days after somebody, uh, another driver took, um, a, a Mercedes AMG GT GT three race car that they had made unrestricted, you know, that because it wasn't running in a proper race, they, you know, they, they took off the, the power limitations and weight limitations and everything else. Uh, and he, um, they, it was, uh, uh, Jules, Jules Gunyan, uh, took that one around Mount, Mount Panorama, set a record with it. Uh, Dumas took it and immediately broke that record with this electric super van. Um, and he hit top speed of, uh, 320 or uh, 300 kilometers an hour. So that's about 180 miles an hour, uh, on the straight. Um, and, um, just blew, blew away. It was a one minute, 52, 56.28 seconds. Um, for this 2000 horsepower electric van, it's crazy. It's, a van. <laughs> yeah. it's not really a van unless it's filled with like random things in the back. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Children, oh, this, is filled, or... this is filled with random electronics and motors and batteries. Yeah. There should be a kid in the back, like with yeah. Cheerios, is all I'm saying. <laughs> or, dog. Be, if, or Cheerios ground into the, the carpet, or a dog. <laughs> Or like a mountain bike, mud, you know, mud from a mountain bike. Something, something, you know, vanish. Yeah. <laughs> I like saying vanish. <laughs> uh, one last Ford related item uh, is um, this week um, on, uh, on February 29th, Ford um, finally made uh, Ford and Tesla finally opened up access to Tesla superchargers um for Ford EVs. Uh so Lightning, um, Mach E and E Transit uh can now charge at superchargers. Um and uh Ford also opened up the ordering page for your free um NACS to uh CCS uh adapter uh for for uh Ford owners. So if you have a lightning uh Mach E or um uh, E Transit you can go to ford.com slash fast charging adapter. Uh, and, uh, you can order your complimentary, um, adapter. So you get one for every VIN number. Um, so, you know, if you have one vehicle, you can only get one for free, uh, extras are 230 bucks. And if you want your free one, you got to order it before June 30th, uh, from, from July 1st onwards, you'll have to pay 230 bucks for the adapter. Um, Lightnings and Machis are, uh, if they haven't already, uh, they will shortly be getting uh, an OTA software update that adds the superchargers to the Blue Oval Charge Network um, map in the uh, in the car, um, and uh, Tesla also pushed out a uh, uh, an update to the superchargers uh, to enable plug-in charge. So um, with the updates on the charger and on the vehicle and your adapter, you can now drive your Ford EV up to a supercharger, plug it in, and it should, within about 15 to 20 seconds, just start charging without having to do anything else. Um, Ta-da! Yeah. And, uh, oh, well, <laughs> you, do, you do have to plug in the adapter. So you, you plug the adapter on, you take the cable off the charger, put your adapter on it, stick it in the car, 
then it'll it'll start charging. Yep. Plug it into the Tesla thing first, then into your car. That's yep. the that's that's the that's that the is deal. the sequence. If you do it the other way around, if you plug the adapter into the car first and the, then plug in the cable, it won't work. So you have to universe do it implodes. So don't do yeah. that. Yeah. Universe implodes. <laughs> That's the end of all of us. That's the end of all of us. So please, please <laughs> yeah. think about the rest of us when you're plugging your stuff in. Plug it yeah. into the, the Tesla cord, then into your car. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that is the um, the Ford uh, J thirty four hundred adapter uh, available now. Well, available to order now. They'll be shipping later in March. So they'll be, they'll start shipping them out in a few weeks. Uh, but uh, that uh, and. So if you've got a Ford EV, go ahead and order one. Boom. Then you get to get, charge get at the can. Tesla I, events, I, and then you got to figure out how to charge your F-150 and those yeah. teeny tiny little cables. Yeah. Well, that, there, there is that, that problem. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the, 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 the supercharger cables are pretty short. So, um, yeah. And, and where the charge ports are on the Fords on the left front fender, um, you end up having to park in the wrong slot. Um, and ended up basically taking up two slots uh, in order to fit, but but it is it is doable. Some supercharger stations do have some pass of the through. chargers set up, yeah, for pass through or with the chargers on the side. Like my local supercharger, my nearest supercharger station here, about five minutes away from me, has one of its twelve chargers set up so that you could pull up beside the charger. Um, and so I'm uh, waiting for Ford. Ford hopefully uh, later this week, Ford will. Uh, send me over a lightning or a Mach-E um, and an adapter so I can go try it out. Um, but that supercharger station also just got uh, Magic Docks installed a couple of weeks ago. And so if you have a supercharger with a Magic Dock, you don't have to use the adapter because the adapter is already built in there. Uh, and it, Already it, there. Plug and charge will also work with those. Yeah, the, the, I have some, it turns out there's some Magic Docks in my area, but they only work with like like the Fords right now. Because you said, oh, I have one one mile from my house. I'm like, oh, cool. So I look online. It's like, oh, we have a CCS. You can bring your CCS car here, but only if it's accepted by the supercharger network. And I'm like, and if I open the app, it's like, no, nah, you can't go to those. <laughs> well, the, so the on one, the site, it tells me they're there. But on the app, it's like, yeah, you can't do that with your little the, Hyundai. The, the one, well, the one here, um, I think, does work with other vehicles. It just doesn't have plug-in charge. So you have to use the app to activate. Yeah, which I'm fine with that. Yeah, which you know, and I've I've got uh, a Genesis G80 EV in the driveway right now, and I'm actually going to go over and try that later on this afternoon. Cool, and see if it actually works, and see how <gasps> fast it'll charge. There you go. I have a I have a little thing I did this week. What's that? I went to the f- fancy uh, EA Electrify America um, flagship station in the San indoor Francisco. One? The indoor one. And you know what? Did any of the chargers actually work? They all worked. No one had to move. Everything worked exactly like it was supposed to. Everything is 350 kilowatts. Um, the, the little lounge area, there were two little lounge areas. They were very comfortable. They have Wi-Fi a, and stuff? They had free Wi-Fi. Um, they had a, a, a vending machine. And really, I think the, what the thing needs is like during the day is a little coffee bar. Because like, it's San Francisco. Come on. Yeah. Give us a coffee bar. Um but there's there's people there. They're there 24 hours a day. Um, you can Amazing. see some. Yeah, no, it's like all the things that you that that charging station should be as we move forward um, is what this is. And it's 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 uh, you know, Iana is like they're they're talking about how they're going to have essentially this sort of setup. Um, and uh, Tesla has a couple of places like this, like Kettleman City between uh, yeah. San Francisco and uh, L.A. has this sort of thing. Where they have like a little lounge you can go inside, and I've I've gone there a few times with Teslas, uh, but yeah, yeah, no one had to move, no one moved, no one had to switch chargers. What you just plugged nice in, that. and it just that's, happened. That's and amazing. The, and the the person was like directing traffic, and because there's 20 stations and they're all working, they're all 350, and you know it was a nice little cadence of people coming and going. It, now no, EA it, just has to fix their other 800 stations, and we're good. Well, yeah. <laughs> Little details, but uh, no, it was it was it was great. So if you live in or you're driving through San Francisco, uh, this is the place to go. Um, I, I you know I tried a, a a Dunkin a cold Dunkin Donuts mocha drink thing. Gross, Did you disgusting. Get the Dunkin Kings thing that they were advertising after the Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't know what that is. 
Oh, I didn't see the Super Bowl. <laughs> it was the I only saw the ad, and because I'm in New England, and I think Dunkin' Donuts is a way of life. They have these fancy. Ben Affleck was there, and and Matt Damon were part of the commercial. And these ridiculous outfits, and they came up with their own coffees. And one of them's a coffee, iced coffee, that has I don't even know what's in it, but it's the Dun Kings is what they're calling themselves. <laughs> and he has a straw or a stick sticking out of it. And there's like three Munchkins stuck onto it. So I don't know. It's like half coffee, half dessert. Apparently, you can really is buy that like it. a Timbit. Kind of like a Timbit. Munchkins are like Timbits. Yes. Okay. Um, so you have the little Munchkin stuck in it. And he's in this bright orange, ridiculous outfit that apparently you could also buy. And there was an auction. And it was it was actually a pretty funny commercial. But yeah, they're the Dun Kings. And <laughs> Dun Kings. Yeah, and you could literally order the coffees that they mentioned in their little ads. So. Okay. So, there you go. So you can do that. Wow. So um, wow. I'm, I'm sure that's probably better than their little like bottle drink that I had that made me like... Very possibly. It was not good. But the rest of the experience was re- really good. So, the, you know, so we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. You know, <laughs> it's, put 350 kilowatt chargers everywhere for DC fast charging. Put more level twos out there for people just parking and going into, like, you know, walking around retail areas. And we'll, we'll, we'll and make sure they all work. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, work. that's a special. That's, that's the really important part. Because it doesn't matter if you put chargers there that are non-functional. They they actually have to work. Just one of the, one of the big things about me taking my job at SAE was that we're you know we do we help with training and but we do certification for charging station technicians. Oh, that's cool. So we're working with Charger Help. Um, they're a company out of LA, and they uh, yeah they have technicians. They go out and fix these things, which we don't have enough of. I know ChargePoint has its own sort of training thing that they're coming up with. So between us and Charger Help and Charger you know, charge point and other companies, you know, we're, we're, we're training a, an, uh, hopefully an army of people who will fix these things as opposed to they just sit there for weeks at a time. Yeah. And every time you pull up, we're like, yeah, that one's still broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Um, so Honda, uh, announced a new plug-in hybrid sort of this week. It's, I mean, it's, <laughs> it, I mean, it is, it's not sort it, of, it, it is a plug-in hybrid. It yeah. Yeah. It, it's um, just, different <laughs> yeah it's a crv it's called the e crv efc ev um and uh, you're speaking in code the <laughs> efc v what <laughs> efc ev so um, it doesn't need that second it doesn't need that little e though it could just be, be the crv fc ev it doesn't need that little, that little e yeah extra yeah. Little bit. yeah yeah um so you know FCEV for for those not familiar stands for fuel cell electric vehicle, and and you're right the the, the first E doesn't really make sense because it's like saying ATM machine yes exactly <laughs> you don't need an electric fuel cell electric vehicle, um, but um, this is a, a CRV um, the modified version of the CRV that uh, they are building in the plant that used to make the NSX in Ohio. Um, and um, uh, Honda has, this is the fourth generation of uh, fuel cell vehicle that Honda has made available to the American public, or at least some members of the public in California. Um, it, so it's a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, but it also has a big battery uh, that you can plug in and charge. Uh, it is uh, a 17.7 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, that, by itself will give you about 29 miles of driving range. Um, and then instead of an internal combustion engine driving a generator to replenish the battery pack or to keep the vehicle going, it has a fuel cell stack. And this is the one that they jointly developed with General Motors. Uh, the GM, instead of putting into regular vehicles, is putting into trucks and planes and locomotives and stuff like that. Um, and... Um, the uh, when the the battery gets depleted, the fuel cell stack produces electricity from like combining hydrogen and oxygen to make water and a flow of electrons uh, to keep the the battery going for up to two hundred and seventy miles. So now you can you know when in if you're in California and you can't find one of the fifty two hydrogen stations um, or find find a hydrogen station that is open or working. Um, oh, it's 55 now. Ooh. Well, did it go back up again? Because it was 52 when I looked earlier this week. 
I'm looking at the well. I'm looking at the PDF. Oh, you know what? This is from February. The yeah. late, no, no, that's no. This is right. Yeah, 55. There's 55, and 18 are in permitting. Ooh. But they're all in California. It looks like. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you'll you'll only be able to get this CRV um, in California, um, and you know at least for you know for most people's daily driving. You know, if you plug it in every night, you'll be able to drive it around on on electricity, you know, from the grid without having to, uh, use the hydrogen, uh, which can be handy. Um, and then just use the hydrogen for longer trips. Um, <laughs> what do you guys think? Okay. As the only person who could actually have this vehicle, <laughs> can't drive I'm like, tell me. I'm like, Oh, this is kind of cool. I, 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 okay. So here's the deal. I would, if they had a really great lease deal, I'm talking under $200 and I didn't have to pay for fuel, I totally get this. <laughs> <laughs> because around where I live, it's all the things. It's, you know, it's, it's an EV. If it's not an EV, it's an EV still making water. Um, I, you know, it, it would, it would replace like essentially our Kona for the dog. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be the dog car. I mean, and, it, you know, it'd be the dog and Aaron car. But I'm of course, it time. only makes sense where I live. It's only, it's only a Robbie car. The yeah. rest of y'all, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> we're, we're SOL. <laughs> You're SOL. I'm going to go drive this car in uh, some point I th in March. Yeah, that's this month. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll have a better, uh, you know, sort of jam on it. Better the CRV is a great, you know, the CRV is a great car. Honda makes good cars. Um, it's, it's, th there's no pricing. I have no idea how much it's going to cost. It's only, you can only lease it. So, you know, because of course, you, would, I, you wouldn't want to actually buy this thing. Yeah, yet. this is you definitely would only want to lease it anyway. Um, it's you know, I, I still I still think that that hydrogen is great for long haul trucking and it's going to be, I don't know, a very long time before it uh, makes sense for for passenger vehicles unless you live at my house. Yeah. <laughs> Because I could charge it at night. We do the 20 miles a day. Once a week, we go to the Emeryville, like right next to the bus station. We put some gas or some, some fuel in it. Not even once a week. Once every few weeks, we go and do that. And then we just carry on with our day. Yeah, I, I actually first drove a vehicle with this kind of configuration back in 2007. Um, Ford was working on this. They, they had built um, the Ford High Series Drive Edge concept um which was basically the same thing it was a fuel cell plug-in hybrid uh had a battery that would go about 50 miles on a charge and then the fuel cell was a range extender um and that project was led by the mujibi jaws the guy i mentioned earlier and that's where i first everywhere. met him when i went to drive this thing um and that ford had planned to build a fleet of at least 100 of these for real world testing uh but then in 2008 is the financial situation got worse and worse. They, they canceled the project. Um, but, um, you know, it, this is not a new idea, but this will be the first one that will be at least nominally available to some members of the public. If you live in California, a few people. Yeah. yeah. A few people. Yeah. It's, it, it, it yeah. I, uh, I, again, I don't, do you guys should not get this car. Well, you well, can't. Can. <laughs> I literally can't. But I could. I could. I think it's 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 interesting. It's it's you know you just kind of keep plugging along. Everyone just keeps plugging along with hydrogen because they know at some point it makes sense for some people. But I would get yeah. it if I could. I would not. Yeah. Be, I would be fine with getting it. Yeah, you're like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I can do this. I'd do it. It's 270 miles. All right. Yeah, I mean, I. Yeah. If there if there was at least one hydrogen station around, you know, anywhere within twenty miles of me, I I would definitely consider getting. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, oh, okay. Do you think this is like, let's say, okay, so let's look 10, 15 years in the future. Hydrogen infrastructure has been built out for long haul trucking, which means that you have, you know, stations along major corridors. So because of those stations, now automakers, you know, you can sell more hydrogen vehicles for, you know, trucks, you know, a large like a large F one fifty. Like mm -hmm. as a hydrogen vehicle makes total sense. So if you live along, so now you're going to have like a little spider web effect. Things are sort of creeping out. You're going to have more stations along, along uh, outside of the interstates. Um, so hydrogen becomes a, a thing. Do you think we're going to see more uh, plug-in hybrid hydrogen vehicles where 
you know, you, you plug in, it's a RAV4. You get your RAV4, you plug it in at night, you get 40, or at that, hopefully at that point, 60 miles of range. You go around town, whatever. And then once every few weeks, you're like, oh, I need to get some fuel. And you go and you, you, you hit up the hydrogen station at the Flying J. You think that's a, a thing? <laughs> 15 years from now, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all right. a possibility. All right. That's it. Yeah. Been, uh, at that point, you know, you know, we'll probably have. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why we'll I'm saying this. We'll have, that solid we'll have solid state for reals. That, we'll, we'll have, have enough chargers that, and, and batteries that, you know, go far enough. It doesn't really that, make sense. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to transport this, you know, I, I, a lot of people don't think about the fact that like gas doesn't show up, just isn't just there at your gas station. Like they have to pull it out of the ground and then they got to ship it to a refinery and then the refinery does their magic and their fire and stuff. And then, the, then they ship it from there to like a station. And then they ship it from there to big trucks and those big trucks go to the gas station then they shove a big you know they, they fill the hole full of gas and that's how you get gasoline for your car meanwhile um i need electricity for my car oh it's already the infrastructure is already pretty much there i just yeah. plug it in and there you go well even even with hydrogen you know you can you know the thing you, is you, you can, can make you can, it at the place yeah you can, yeah you can make it on site and do it even from renewables you know you could have a solar array or a couple of wind turbines you know all you need is a source of water Mm-hmm. to, you know, and then, you know, uh, renewable electricity and you can crack the the water to produce um, hydrogen and oxygen, um, which, you know, also is good, uh, you know, and then just put the hydrogen in some tanks and, and uh, compress it and stick it in the vehicles. And that, but I wonder I mean, if the, the energy, uh, like wh- how much energy you make, you're using to build hydrogen to, in order to fuel a vehicle is less than the amount of energy than it would be just to put the electricity directly into a, into an EV. Um, at, at, at the, at the, you know, at the usage level, yes, you, it's going to take more. You, there, there's obviously some losses in there. So, I mean, if you were producing hydrogen on site and using that to generate, you know, uh, to, to fuel the vehicles, that's not going to be as efficient as just taking the electricity to charge the vehicle. On the other hand, though, it takes longer to charge the battery. It takes a lot more energy to actually manufacture that battery. So if you factor in the energy it takes to manufacture batteries and to extract the materials to manufacture those batteries and all the other stuff that goes along with that, um, for smaller vehicles, it probably doesn't make sense. So we're just back for, to trucking. For larger, for larger vehicles, <laughs> like the type Americans like to drive, uh, you America. Know, it makes a lot of sense. And you can, you know, you can refuel a fuel cell vehicle in about five minutes, about the same amount of time it takes to, uh, to fuel a gasoline vehicle. Uh, so you can do it a lot faster than you can charge an, a battery electric vehicle. Um, so well, currently, for, yeah, it's just they we keep getting quicker at that. That's yeah. But so maybe we're but, just going to keep doing long haul trucking for hydrogen. Yeah, it's it's probably going to be for for large larger vehicles only. Yeah. Well, there we go. That was our right. that was our math problem for today. Okay. No, that was too much math problem for me. I need more. Like that's enough. <laughs> All right, let's go back to battery EVs. Uh, VW ID four um, getting some upgrades for twenty twenty four model year. Um, it's uh, the. The versions with the larger 82 kilowatt hour battery um, get a new infotainment system, slightly larger 12.9 inch screen. Nice. And the best part is the sliders for the controls, which really should be physical controls. They should not be touch sliders, but we'll let that go for the moment. That's that's a different they're, battle. They're, they're, <laughs> they, at least now they're, they're backlit. I mean, okay. It was so weird when it wasn't back. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm pulling up to my house or I'm doing something. I'm like, how come the stereo is not getting louder, but the car is getting warmer? Oh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> getting hot, but it's not getting musical. What's happening? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's that's the major change. They, you know, they also resourced some components in the batteries. So the Model Year 24 ID4s are eligible for the $7,500 tax credit. Because they're the vehicles are assembled in Tennessee, and the uh, the batteries come from a factory in Georgia, uh, so you can get seventy five hundred bucks off your ID four. Um, and um, uh, let's see. Oh, I think they they added a little more power now. Uh, so the on the the larger 
battery size. So they still have the 62 kilowatt hour battery is the base model. The 82 uh, gets a bump up to uh, 282 horsepower and 402 pounds feet of torque, uh, which is a little more, about 80, 80 more than it had previously. So, there you go. And I'm happy yeah. with it. I mean, nice little changes. That's a good thing. Yeah. They're making and, it I, from, from people who've driven it. They seem to, re, they say like, oh, this is so much better than the, the first gen. So right? or yeah. the, this little refresh that they've done. So good job. Good on, good on Volkswagen. Go Volkswagen. Every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. Plus full of full tax credit. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Like really big. You don't have to lease it. If you want to actually buy it, you can just get the monies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get the money. Take the money and run. All right. Um, this week, Fisker had their Q4 earnings Oof. call. It, it, it was not good. <laughs> as, as we've suspected, uh, we've talked about previously, yeah. the the probability that Fisker would not be able to see out the rest of 2024 with the funds they had on hand. Um, they they made it official in their, their Q4 earnings. They said they, they added in the uh, going concern statement. Which means that, yeah, there's a there's a probability that we will run out of money before the end of this year. That's not. Good. Yeah. Uh, and then the following day comes a report from Reuters that uh, Nissan is talking to Fisker about potentially investing and partnering with Fisker. You know, the t- Nissan EV platform is nice. I like the E-Force uh, Aria a lot. Um I don't I know what they're like getting. What are, what are they getting from Fisker? There must be something that Fisker has that Nissan's like. Oh, they were, wasn't there talk about the truck? The truck. Yes. Yeah. It's the, like a the truck Atlas thing. pickup truck. The Alaska. Uh, because Alaska, right? Is Alaska. 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 Yes. Okay. Alaska pickup. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, when when I talked to Henrik at CES in January, yeah, you know, he acknowledged that they needed to find a partner to work with to build that vehicle because it wouldn't make sense for them to build it in Austria where they, even though it uses the same hardware as the ocean SUV, um, they, it wouldn't make sense to build it in Austria because, you know, the, the main market for it is in the U S and they, um, you know, if they built it in Austria, they would get the 25% chicken tax. So it wouldn't be cost effective. Um, but Nissan, on the other hand, wants an electric pickup truck. They, are ending production of the Titan full-size trucks in Tennessee or in, in Mississippi. Um, and um, Fisker's got an electric pickup design. Nissan Ready to go. It. It's perfect. What could go wrong? Let's make this happen. I, I just want a small electric truck. But I also so, want a key van. So, you know, I want a lot of things. There's a lot of things you want, Robbie. You <laughs> I want the ID Buzz. I want a key van. I want the, the mini electric when it, uh, convertible. I want, yeah. What, what I'm saying is I need three more jobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get all the things. Plus the, yeah, I want to trade in my BRZ for the newest version of BRZ. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm, it, it seems weird. I, I don't know. I, I look at them like, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Is this going to destroy it? Is this going to destroy everybody? Like, I don't think it's going to destroy everybody. <laughs> it's going to destroy everyone. Is this the end of everything? I, I, this is the end. I get is that it... there's real reasons to do this from Ethan's point of view and from, I guess, also from Fisker because otherwise it's gone. But I, is it going to come up with good stuff? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be good? I, you know, I think, I, I you know, I, after decade and change of nissan just sort of being like there kind of chugging like I, every time i get into a nissan i'm like oh this is good job you're, you know you're almost there like you're not quite on par with like the rest of the market but you've clearly made some 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 advancements you're clearly doing the good work i still think the nissan kicks is the best mm-hmm. car that they make um for it's it's inexpensive and it it drives really well and um but i think yeah i think they the, you know the the they're they're going in the right direction, and the small truck market is was for some reason uh, automakers are surprised that people want to buy the Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, yeah. can't, I can't imagine why they would actually be shocked. Yeah, I don't. I don't because let me get the high yield. You know, you get the high profits from the F one fifty, and there's tax reasons why people buy. You know, for some people to buy big trucks and. 
it's a lot. It's a lot to unpack why large trucks uh, sell so well. Um, but I think there's a lot of people who just, I just want a truck that can throw some things in sometimes and me and my friends can go somewhere and I don't need something the size of my first a studio apartment. <laughs> so, you know, back in 2021, Nissan showed a concept called the surf out, which was a compact electric pickup truck. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, they would love to build this, but, you know, justifying it would be tough. But if if they do this deal with Fisker, which Reuters is report, reporting the deal could close this month, um, my guess is that what will happen, you know, if they build this in, in either Tennessee at the Smyrna assembly plant or in Canton, Mississippi, that instead of using the existing um, ocean uh, components, Mm-hmm. They will probably switch over to using components from the uh, from the Aria, yeah, and and use that platform, um, and just have you know Fisker's body design on the Fisker branded version, and then do a Nissan branded version with a design something like the Surf Out concept. Surf Out. I really when I went to that GM factory, that GM design studio. I don't know, a year and a half ago, and they showed me like their little concept EV truck. I'm still, I'm, where is that truck? I want a teeny tiny truck. That thing was where, awesome. Apparently where been it, canceled. Where is that truck? Okay. Please. Where is that truck? <laughs> Give me. What that truck? <laughs> Give me. They showed us a lot of stuff and then they, they, they teased some sort of smaller, uh, what do you call that thing? Hummer. And... Give me. Come on. Yeah. Give me, give me, give me. Get, get, get with it. Give so, the program, guys. So maybe, maybe we'll get the surf out, you know, Based on a Fisker. You think it'll still be called the surf out? Probably not. Hmm. You never know. Well, Possibly. It could. Let's call it the brat. Brat. <laughs> 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 so we're like, what the hell, man? <laughs> all right, all right, you let them know. You let the name uh, fall into the public domain, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the, the trademark expired. We had snapped it up. Uh, all right. Finally, the last thing uh, for this week is, uh, um, it, Robbie, have you done any drone video? No, I, you know, I, I think I need to get a drone. I, it, it's, it's funny because you know I did a lot of video when I was as at Engadget, and anytime we could do a, do drone shots, people lost their minds because it just looks cooler. Then just like, hey, here's me standing in front of a car, and then I drive by, and maybe it's a car-to-car shot or whatever. But when you add the drone to it, people just go nuts. <laughs> well, trying to do drone shots with Formula One cars can be problematic because uh, F1 cars are they're pretty quick, um, and and drones to say the least. Yeah, dr- drones generally are not quite as quick, um, but. Um, the uh, the Red Bull team partnered up with uh, some guys in the Netherlands um, who build some crazy drones, and they developed what they're claiming is the world's fastest camera drone. Um, and uh, this thing will apparently go 350 kilometers per hour, which is about 220 miles an hour. And I'll I'll include the the YouTube uh, video in the uh, show notes. You can see this. Uh, as they, they d- developed the first prototypes of the drone um, and did a drag race between the drone and an older Red Bull F1 car. And then it ends up with this drone following um, Max Verstappen driving this year's uh, Red Bull F1 car on a lap around Silverstone. And the thing, you know, one of the things about watching racing on TV, watching racing, you know, video of racing is you don't really get the sensation of speed very well. Um, but from watching the the video from this drone, uh, you really get the sensation of speed, you know, as this thing is tracking, you know, just above and behind the, uh, the F1 car, yeah. uh, you know, and flying, you know, past the, the, the stuff on the, the side of the track and the bridge, you know, and zipping, you know, past this, this bridge over the track. It's pretty wild. Um, it's, it's so, you can, there's one of the things I learned early on when shooting video is that 
inside in car or even shooting me driving down the road between two miles an hour or 20 miles an hour and 80 miles an hour it looks exactly the same on video mm -hmm. yes. so yeah. there's no point like i don't i don't drive fast when i'm doing these videos people think oh he must be driving like a maid there's no point it doesn't matter it just makes it harder for the like, it makes it harder for the camera person on the side of the road trying to like who's whip around when it still doesn't look fast. Right. I remember doing B roll stuff and they're like drive by and just like, no, just drive by kind of slow. And it's like I'm going zoom when you look at the video. It's like, how is that possible? It's it's very deceptive. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a, it always looks are, like it's, are, are it's you you're going that too video slow. It's not always representative of what actually happened. Sometimes the video makes it look much faster than you're actually driving. Although, you know, I am. Speaking. Or it makes it look slow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it doesn't, it's like the same speed. It doesn't really matter. Speed. Like you really just don't get the sense of the accurate speed watching something when, is it, on a video mm -hmm. as you do when you're looking at it right in front of you. And it's yeah. also true when you uh, do off-road stuff. Like you could be on a forty-five degree angle hill, yeah. and it yeah. looks like you're in a parking lot. Right. Like we, I had, I, I, I <laughs> we shot. A, or you could be in the parking lot and just tilt your camera, and it looks like yeah, you're on we, a forty-five degree hill. Yeah, we we shot a jeep, and I was like struggling not to fall over. I had to hold on to it in order to not fall over, so I could do my stand up outside the vehicle. And someone was like, "Well, where'd you guys? You guys just took this around like a dirt road?" I'm like, "No, you don't. This is really." Just look at the trees. Just, no, it doesn't matter. It really does. You're right. Because I've had offering, like I took, had pictures and stuff. And so like, what were you doing? Well, I was doing this, but I looked at my own pictures. I'm like, this looks not impressive at all. But I swear to God, I was hanging in the seatbelts. Well, I was at such an angle. Well, when, when we did the, uh, the Wrangler drive in, um, uh, where was it last year? Uh, I can't even remember oh, now. I can't. Yeah. Uh, was it I, wherever? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, when we did the, the Wrangler drive, we did the off-road portion of it. You know, and I was on a part of it and, the, and the, the Jeep slid sideways a little bit. So I was sitting at about a 30 degree angle to the side. You know, I took a photo from the driver's seat, you know, while I was still in the car, you know, looking up the hill at the, the other Jeep with the winch that was going to help help me up before right. I slid all the way down. <laughs> you know, and there, you know, you can see the angle between my dashboard and, you know, the the other Jeep. And it's like, oh, okay. Now I now I get the sensation of the the angle you were at. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. So yeah, this 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 idea where it could follow it because I think there's a there's a drone out now that it'll follow you up to like twenty or thirty miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are using that for like car driving shots. And yeah. so the car's just driving like twenty five, and you get a nice shot, and it'll like spin around. But it's definitely not this thing. Yeah the the only the only problem with this drone is. You know, because it's going so fast, it drains the battery really fast. So it doesn't have very much endurance. So it can only go for a few minutes at a time uh, at that speed. But um, the shots look amazing. If you have and, an army of them, yeah, like if you have true. 10 of them or 12 of them, and you just like one comes at the, the right, right when one's coming back, you launch the next one, it takes off. Yeah. And well, the, the other issue is, you know, they can't at that speed, they can't stream full quality video live full quality video from oh uh, yeah that's true so you so get you to, you'll see yeah, it later so, so the pilot you know has uh you know is getting a video stream but it's very low quality and it's a first person view shot you know as he's flying this thing uh and uh you know if they can get it to the point where it's got enough endurance and can transmit live video fast enough at high quality that would be amazing for watching racing on tv oh mm -hmm. yeah That'd be they'll very... figure it out there's yeah. someone they're good at making drones. Someone else is good at, you know, transmitting high quality stuff. Yeah. Get those, get those Twitch people on it. They'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you everybody for listening in and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.